Okay, so we'll begin. We're holding Hilkas Mikvoy, Simon Reish Aleph, and we're going to be doing today Sif Lametes. Hopefully, we'll get to Sif all the way till Sif Mendalad. As we are headed towards the end of Hilkas Mikvoy, we're going to get into a little bit more into the actual engineering design of a mikveh. And you will be surprised, there are various ways to make a kosher mikveh, many shitas, and some are more machmer, some are stricter than others. In other words, you can get by with snow, he said. In other words, that's as far as the medium to make the mikveh. But the construction of the actual bore is important, especially if you're going to be replacing from time to time the water. You don't have a good filter system, you can't use that water too often. So there's all kinds of conditions that need to be considered in, in making the mikveh uh, in order to avoid the problem of either she'uvin coming about through habiyoso the tuma, all kinds of issues that can come up that we want to avoid because maim she'uvin are going to not only be a problem in that uh, in the three lugin. In other words, if the mikveh is just under Memso and, you, and there's a possibility that somebody had a bucket of water and th- those three logging will ruin the water that's already there, Maim Shu'uvim is a problem in general because if you don't have, at least at the very, very least, Memso at a given time, how are you going to clean it? If you're going to use faucet water, that's shuvim. If you how how are you going to eventually replace the water? So my shuvim is a problem in many respects. But the good news is that even my shuvim, which ordinarily can pass a mikveh in various ways, can become good water, can become kosher water through something called hamshacha, through something called zriya is to something called Hashoko. So these are concepts that we're going to perhaps elaborate a little bit more later on when we go into the actual design of a mikveh. But briefly, we covered, it, uh, covered these concepts before when we said that mind that are not good, mind that are not tehorin, not clean, not pure, mind shuvin, if they are nizra, if they are seeded into mind sharon, they can become good waters. In other words, the, the aspect of she'uvim can be eliminated. Same thing with hamshacha. Once these waters that were she'uvim at one time were spilled on the ground and traveled on the ground without in human intervention, which is a key you know, in, in, in making a kosher mikveh, then it could be transformed back into kosher water. And of course, when we spoke about ice and snow, in the form that they are right now, they can be apparently transported as well, not according to everyone. That is why we said that if you're transporting snow, you would have to ideally transport in a truck that has netting that is perforated. So it's not sitting directly on the, on the bed of the truck. Still, there are various ways to accomplish the, uh, this, uh, various ways to take even that which is shovim and make it so that it does not negate the kashas of a mikveh. However, there's all kinds of conditions, whether we're making the entire mikveh like that, or we're just adding a little bit, or we're just changing the waters of the mikveh as we go, and how do we accomplish that? And that's when we introduce the concept of hashoka, where you have a hole of two its boys in diameter connecting the tevila, the bore of the tevila, where we immerse to the bore of the megeshamim, where the water, the rainwater is contained. So we have this connection, and that connection can provide a a form of, I guess you can call it, kashras to this mikveh, just because it's connected. And once it's connected, you can add, you can continuously add waters to the bore, either the bore hazriya, where the rain is coming in, or to the other one, 
where actually people are immersing. There's different pros and cons as to where the water is added, how it's added, what system do you use to connect the mikveh, how does the water from the, from the rain come into the mikveh. There's various uh, methods to accomplish it and they all have to do with different chumras or different chashashim. Chashashim, you see, in other words, that we, are, we have several concerns. And maybe we'll go into some of them today. So these are concepts that are, are handy in, uh, in understanding the, the next Seif. But before we get into Seif Lamed Tes, just a quick review of the last two Seif, Lamed Zayin, Lamed Ches, we spoke about Re'ofim, tiles on the roof that were intended to be used to cover the roof. That's all they are. So even though they can somehow uh, hold water, because they may have gumois, they may have cavities, they may have uh, a niche or something in them where water can temporarily be held and from there they travel to the mikra. They don't pass out the mikra because they were not intended to be mekabel. That's a very important condition, which we will see in, in Sif Lametes, that the, the criteria for passing a mikveh is that you have to have had in mind to, be, uh, to use a container to be mekabel the water in order for that water to later be used in the mikveh. In other words, there has to be das, there has to be intent. That's one of the criteria. So, Re'ofim in Sif Lamed Zayim does not pose a problem because they're not intended to be Mechabal Mayim. In Lamed Ches, we had a slightly different concept, but similar, and that is one who intentionally puts a sack or kupa right underneath the, the tsinor, which I guess we can call the gutter. And that gutter is not a problem because of the way it's made, that it's kosher for the water to travel through it. But still, you're, you're, you're gathering the water in a sack or kupa, in some sort of bag, in some sort of uh, container. And from there, it says that The waters that will go from there will not pass to the mikveh. Why? Because we're talking about a container of sorts that has many, many holes. And as we will soon see, a hole in a keli makes it not a keli. So even though a keli is a problem when it comes to water, making the water maim shi'uvin, like buckets and so forth, but if that keli has a hole, and that hole is in the bottom, or, or at the very least on the side, but on the side towards the bottom, where it will be impossible for this vessel this going to hold water, then it's not a keli. And we said that in order to, in, to make a keli and not a keli, it, it will be sufficient to have a kol shehu a little, a little hole even. However, here, the way the, the Mephorshim explained it, we're talking about that it has many holes. Now, what, why would I need to know that it has many holes? Even one small hole would not make it a keli. So we will see that there is something called shvoferet anod, and we spoke about that. When we talk about two mikvois that are connected, you need a hole of a certain diameter, of two fingers, that rotate around that hole. So you need a little bit of a bigger hole to connect mikvois. This size of a hole is also helpful when you're trying to transport the water intentionally through this kind of a keli. So that is why the example here is using many little holes because the many little holes is similar to a shoferes anoid in this respect. Otherwise, why, why say many little holes? So even though the Mechaber does not quote that description here, but that's what we're talking about here, that, that there are many little holes, and because of that, it's okay. The waters traveling from this sack or kupa are not are not going to pass all the mikra. So we have to go directly from that 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 that, that, that sock, from the sack to. Well, even if it goes through cement, that's okay. The, the question here really is really, can it go directly? Yeah, if something is not a keli, it's not a problem. The problem is when something is a keli. So then, what do you do then if something is a keli? That's what we're going to be talking about later on. What happens if you left the bucket somewhere? and water is collected there, 
unintentionally, can you still use those water, those waters? But here, so far, all we know is that either there are often the tiles because they're not intended to be macabre, water, it's okay if the water travels through them, and the same with the kupa, that is takat atzinor, right underneath the gutter, right underneath the pipe, it could be there if it's perforated. That's it. That's all we know from what the Mechaber says, that there's no problem because of the Nekovim in it. We're talking about that there's holes in it. Sif Lametes, here, this, the Mechaber is, brings down a Rashba. That's where this halacha is, is taken from. And he says as follows, That which we just said, that, that if something is not intended, is not made in order to, to be mekabel mind, it does not pass to the mikveh, that's only on condition, that's if they're falling on their own. From where they're collected, from where the waters are collected, to the mikveh. But if, if a man took that vessel, even though it wasn't intended to collect water, if he was involved in transporting that water into the mikveh, there is a poison. The reason for that is shekol alide odom. Anytime an odom is involved in this process of collecting the water, transporting the water, as we've seen before, even if he was squirting somehow with his hand and with his feet, even if he was just passing by water in a puddle. And they somehow squirted out of his feet, from underneath his feet, directly into a mikvah. It's possible. The man was involved in somehow getting this water to the mikvah. But that's only if it happens through his feet. If he was riding an animal, but if the water was squirted through the feet of an animal, they did not pass on it. Even though it happened through him, he was riding the animal still. Because it happened through the animal, it's not called like Mezalef Beragla, as though he is directly squirting the water and therefore getting the water to the big man. Can he intentionally ride through the animal? Yeah, no problem. He, I mean, he's not intentionally doing that. No, no. It's just happening. It's just happening that way that the water... Because a man on a horse or on another right. on large animal, right. if he hits it in a certain way or makes it move in a certain way, he could cause the leg to move to make it squirt. Yeah, right, right. So it, that can be done intentionally. Then. Sure, sure. And that's what he brings down here, that that some argue and do not distinguish between man and animal, as we saw a little bit before. Okay. So, so far, so good. What we see from this is that if something happens through the intervention of an Odom, of a man, then it could be a problem. It could have the status of Maim Sheuven, and, there, and it would pass over three Logan. So, the Kiddush here is that even if it happened, Odom Kavono, there was no intent for him to do it, but it happened through him. Whereas what we learned before, Siftes Bob, there we, we learned that there was a shita that just like a Mayan is B'day Shemayim, a Mikveh has to be B'day Shemayim. And therefore it would not passel the Gimel Lugin unless the, whole, the, the Roiv of the Mikveh is like that. So according to that, this would not be a problem over here. This would not be a difficulty. But the Shulchan Aruch and the Ramo apparently go along with the Rashba. Not according to that other Shita that was a Sif Tesvob. So here, I mean, it would be it would passel with three logging, just like in any or any other case. What happens? If the whole mikveh is done through an odom, but it's done through hamshacha, hamshacha, which we'll talk about later on the, in other seifim, is when the water is traveling to the mikveh underground. 
So man is involved. He caused or brought about the Hamshokho. That's not clearly defined here by the Machaber. But based on what we saw, that what the Rajba says, it appears to be that if all of it is being made uh, through Hamshokho, if, if, if a man is involved, it, the din, the status of the Mikra would be like Maim Sheuvim. Like the din of, of Sheuvo Shim Shechu or Kula. If, if, if you have all of the Maim Shuvim coming about through Amshachor, and it was the entire mikveh made like that, it would be possible. So, according to the Rashra, that would be the din over here by Amshachor. You know, was a man, a man is involved. He's involved, but he's involved through Amshachor. Yeah. But so, if it's the Amshachor without a man, you could fill the entire mikveh that way. Yeah, well, we will see how could how that could be. How could it? How could that happen? How I mean, that can no, come about? No man is just it's flung along the ground. You can yeah. fill the entire for that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, if the man is not involved. It's not a problem because it's coming directly, and that could happen. Yeah, sure. Anyway, the Chazan Ish writes the same that Hamshacha uh, he would not solve any problem. No, was it, if the Adam was involved in this case, if the, and the whole mikveh was done so. To Amshacha, it would still be a problem. The base Yosef, however, I saw brings down that the Rived would say it's okay. A mikvah that was done kulo bide Adam and Amshacha, it would be kosher. Taz also brings it down here. But based on what we see from the Rajba, and that's I think what the Mechaber is pretty much following, that would not be permissible. Rabbi Kiva Ego brings down a very interesting scenario, and this is more with, with this could easily happen in nowadays with all kinds of machinery, equipment, that when a, a mikvah somehow functions through a mechani- mechanical uh, lever, levers, and similar to what we have today where something comes, springs into action by a timer. So you're not necessarily directly involved at the moment when it is happening, but you've triggered it. In the, in the terminology of Allah, it's called more like a groma. If you heard about that in Shabbos, El Shabbos and elsewhere. It's causation, I guess we would call it in English. You're causing it. You're not directly doing it, but you did something that caused a, uh, a lever to move. And eventually, the Hamshokha occurred. So, that's a question, whether that would be called human intervention or not. I think he writes that there's a reason to be matter or something like that. There wouldn't be any psu, because all it is is a groma. But he just suggests that one should do Hamshokha as well. But it's interesting, in other words, in this kind of a scenario where there's groma, you're causing something to happen, but not directly doing it, it's not exactly human intervention. This is also very, very, very nogea, very relevant to other situations where there are certain concerns that when you unplug the plug that is between two mikvoys, you know, the, the two mikvoys that are connected are not always open to each other. For a variety of reasons, some plug the opening between the two, and only when they need to, they unplug it to allow the waters of the atomic voice to connect. Does that unplugging consider human intervention? Because that's called, that, that is described as a hasarata monea. You are removing something that is blocking. You're not actually bringing something about, but you're removing that which is stopping the waters from flowing to each other. You see the difference? As opposed to actually doing something to bring them together, you are removing something that is holding them apart. So this kak, this plug that is between the two mikvah, between the bor hazriah and the mikvah, some say, I think the Hasam Sofer is the one that is mekel, is linear, that is not called, that's not called that man was involved to bring this about. Because if man is involved, remember, it could be a problem. Chazanish, I think, also. But some do have a concern with that. 
And that's why mikvois are built all in various ways to, uh, to be able to account for all the chumras. There's another example. I'll give you another example where this can come up. Let's say you are using ice and you want to quickly melt it. And how are you going to melt it? You're going to put some hot uh, metal pieces, plates, on this, on this ice. Some are concerned that that is human intervention involved in bringing about the melting of the ice or the snow. The Hassam Sofer would be matter in this case. Right, this is not considered haviyoso al yide odom. It's going to melt by it's melting by itself. I mean, the waters are dripping in, draining in by themselves. Even though you are maybe accelerating it, the the melting, but that's not considered as though you are actually bringing it in to the mikveh. Okay, sif men. Now we're going to talk about the various types of holes. A keli that has a hole, has a perforation at the bottom. I feel that's the halacha. We're not here dealing with halachas of Tuma and Tahara, which sometimes is a little bit different. Here we're concerned about a keli for purposes of whether water is being collected in it will cause the mime to be sheovim. So, a keli shenika b'shulav, a filu kol shehu, the halacha is if any keli, which which you are using to collect the water in some way, some manner. That keli has a small hole even at the bottom. It's not considered a keli for purposes of parceling the mikveh. Very important point. So, you, so then it would be easy to fill a mikveh with shuvim. Right, so we will see. You know, so we will see when that can come in handy. In the old days, remember, to, in order to clean a mikveh, you would remove the old water. How would you remove the old water? I mean, there's no pumps. Yeah. You would use buckets. Well, what happened if you're using a bucket and some of that water fell back in? You see where there could be a problem? Especially if it's falling in once you have less than 40 cell. Oh, then you're back to square one where you're having three lugin falling into a mikvah which is not kosher. You've just collected that water in a keli. So, Kalim in a mikveh can, can be found. I mean, there are situations, there are circumstances where they can pose a problem. As we said, whether it's a filter, whether it's the gutter itself, the water that's collecting somewhere on the roof, the material that therefore is being used has to be such material that does not pose a problem of something which is the Kabel Tuma, something which is considered a keli, especially if you're doing intentionally for the purposes of creating this mikvah. So it means you're building it. It's not like, oh, it just happened to be there. Like with the ra'ofim, with the tavi for. With the tile, it wasn't intended for that purpose. So we said, okay. But once you are involved in the design of the mikvah, you have to make sure that the waters can collect, even temporarily. And as we will soon see, there are other situations where these kalim could be a problem, but the Mechaber therefore tells us if such a keli has a hole and that hole is at the bottom, it will not be called a keli to pass the mikveh. We call Mokom, the Mechaber tells us very clearly right away. One should not be lenient to make the entire mikveh by bringing water in a kli that is menukov. So he says that very clear. And that's what is brought down also in the rush. But Lemai says you shouldn't make such a kli, such, you shouldn't make such a mikveh lechatchila. Now, the difference between this seif, this is what the shach asked before, and the seif zayin, that over there the, the Shulchan Aruch Paskin, like the Rambam, the Allah over there that required the kli, that he sh- that should also be mechubar lekarka should also be connected to the ground. If you recall that, it should in order to not consider it a kli. That is when we're concerned about being toivel in the kli. So being toivel in the kli would be a problem. It would have to therefore be connected to the ground. That's not the concern over here. We don't need that condition over here. 
here the condition is sufficient that it has a hole so it should not be called Maim Sheuvim. That's all. That's all we're dealing with. That's what the, there's a difference between this halacha and Siv Zayin. The Mechaba said you can't l'chadchila make an entire mikvah using a bucket of a hole. Right. Now there's two problems I have with that. One is okay. l'chadchila, which means with the evidence. No, no, no. This, this l'chadchila means to begin with, from scratch. Okay. That's what this l'chadchila means, yeah. Well, okay. That was not clear. And the second is when he says the entire mikvah. Well, by the way, it, the Taz over here, which, which is a very long Taz, goes into all sorts of suggestions of what, how this can be done nonetheless. His shita is that if you had a big enough hole, or not, you would be able to make a mikveh like that. We, we don't hold like that. We don't, we're not recommending that. We don't use this leniency. But the Taz says yes, that if it's Keshwafer not, then it's a real big enough hole that uh, there wouldn't be any problem with it. So the question on this task would be, but wait a minute, even if it's Keshwar Feres and what would you say about Haviyoso al Yide Odom? You can't have a man involved in building this mikvah, in other words, in transporting the water. So he gives various truths and various explanations, and one of them he says, that we're talking about that the waters were not directly poured into the mikveh, but you, that you left it close enough to the mikveh and the waters come there on their own. In other words, the, the, the man is really not a part of this process. That's how he explains it. A form of hamshacha in a sense, that it, it's happening by itself. This is an important idea that if a, if a keli has a hole and the water just goes through it by itself, it's not a problem. And sometimes, as we will soon see, that will be the solution, is to make the hole if somehow waters have gathered and let it, or let it spill. And that would not be exactly human intervention either. But here, based on his leniency of allowing something to be built lechatchila, as long as it's Kishwa Feres and not, that apparently no one, in, no one pretty much uh, goes along with it. Just that he explains for himself, for his, for his own purposes, how do we deal with the Habiyoso Ali De Odom? We don't want the mikveh to, to be made entirely through human intervention. When you see the water should come directly, you know, it was that entirely meaning to, from scratch. Later on, it's not a problem, but you, to build the entire thing, in this manner, Machaba says, no, we shouldn't do it. Ele hakel. But Ta says, yes, you could do it if, you, if it was Keshro Feres Is the Machaba concerned, when he says not new at all, are we talking majority, are we talking... Right, so, so that's... How much can you do then? Right, right, so that, that's the question. Well, if, it, if the majority of the mikveh would be okay, there wouldn't be such a problem. Here, when he says in Haklasus Mikveh Lechatchila, he's talking about making the whole thing to begin with Which in this manner. Which would be something less than 40. Yeah, okay. once you it have. Would be okay. Yeah, once, exactly. Once you, you have Roiv, it's less of a problem. No, no, no. It would appear based on the way you read the Shofar. Yeah. Okay. That if I had 39 saw yeah. coming in from a bucket with a hole, because that's yeah. not all. Yeah. Why did he use the word all? Well, he didn't use the word all. The way all. you put it. Yeah. I, I put it that way. That's, that's what I'm trying to... I'm yeah, because, he's talking, because he is talking about making a mikveh lechatchila. In other words, right. building it from scratch. So basically building the whole thing. Making the whole thing. So what would he say if you had 39 saw it would be, that way? Right, right. Well, the that's, not, but that's saw, not droid, but that's not I mean, droid. No, no, that's what I'm taking, right. to, the, I'm taking to the extreme. Right. 39 saw with the bucket, with the hole on the bottom, and the last saw, either the first or the saw. I would do it the other way around. Saw. I would do the, the first saw. Is, it seems to me it would be okay. Yeah, but I would do all right. I would do either that. The first saw, first three logging would not be a problem, right? Because <laughs> it's, right, exactly. But not to make the majority or all of it. 
this manner. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the key, yeah. I mean, because some of it would be less of an issue. Yes, for sure. That would be the difference between this Seif and the one in Seif Zayin, that over there we're talking about the problem of being toivali in a keli. Well, if the keli is built into the ground, as the Rambam says, that would be an important condition too, not just that, uh, that it has a hole. It's built into the ground. So it has a hole which is metarred from being a keli, and it's connected to the karka, then it will be okay. Because over there we're talking about immersing in it. Here we're talking about just using it to transport water. It's enough that the keli just have a hole in order for the water not to be maim shuvim. So here he's making like the rush, like the rush, that a neck of kol shahu, lemata, the bottom of the keli is good enough. All right. Let's go on in this eve. What about if the hole is not at the bottom? Vimanekev, but Sdadin, it's on the sides. Eno bottom metoras keli. It would not, if it's on the side, it would not it, cancel it from being a keli. Achiye berochav anekev until the rochav anekev, the width of the nekev, is kishoferes anod, which is shehu. Kishtei's boys are two fingers, and he's showing like the first two fingers of, of the four. You know, it was excluding the thumb. Shtei's boys are showing me a harba shem pasa yadar in the palm of the hand. Mitapchot bechalal haneket that you they wrote it in the diameter of the hole. Berevach with space. Ben shumaruba whether it's square, ben shuogel whether it's round, that makes no difference. So then shvoferes anod on the side is okay, but even then it has to be that this whole shvoferes anod is also karov leshulov. It has to be very close to the bottom. So no water from that point and below would gather, would collect. <laughs> if some water is going to collect from that point to the bottom of the keli, then only it's bottom of the It still has the status of a keli. Let's say somehow you, got, you mixed inside some lime, some pebbles, and, and it somehow clogged the hole, closed the hole. That's not called a steema. Don't think that that's already a seal. To make it back a keli. Or if you put it just on the ground and it's somehow sealing it. By Even if he's putting it on lime or the ugfasim, gypsum. All of this is steema. When will it be a steamer? When will it be a real seal to make it back into a keli? If the whole idea was to use those materials, and it was lime and, and gypsum, to seal it, then chosh of steamer. Just mixing, just putting it down where there is lime and gypsum, that's not enough. If you actually seal it with those materials, then you make a steamer. Then you sealed it. Hilka, therefore, Harotzelish of Nakoto. What do you do if you want to be met? Take out water from the mikveh because you want to clean it. Viyare, and you're concerned. As you're taking out water from the mikveh with a bucket, you're concerned. Shema Yachzarum Yaklishim Motsimba Maim Gimel Lugin Lamikveh. Three Lugin of this bucket, of this container, may fall back into the mikveh. Acha Shechosru Mem Soo. After it's 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 declined after it's it went down under 40 so leave so it will pass on it if you're concerned as you're removing water with this container you know what you should do use a container that has a hole Yikova keli Meshula, make a hole at the bottom of this container kosher even a little bit it's not a keli anymore then you don't have a problem even if the waters fall back in. As lo yakshibu amayim shibo shuvin, the waters that, that may have collected in there would never be called mayim shuvin. Great idea, right? Avoid the problem. Ve'im hem mayim noivim. What if it's a waters that are coming from a spring? Then you don't even need that. Ein sorry lechach ki amayon eno nifso b'shibah. According to the Bechaber, amayon is not nifso through She'iva. But remember we spoke a little bit about this already? That not everybody agrees. The Ramah says, no Even in a Mayan, we're like the sheet is the hole that even in a Mayan, 
כי יש חולקים that some disagree, אפילו במיין, and they say, רואים את השאיבה פויסלס. Even in the Mayan, this concept of she'iva, gathering the water, collecting them in a keli, from a Mayan, would also render them ma'im she'uvim. L'chein l'chatchila yesh la'achmer. He says, l'chatchila. You should be ma'achmer. L'inkov akri, she'shoyavim boi, af ma'im. To make a hole in this keli that you're going to be collecting the waters in it, even if this is from a Mayan. V'im lo osu ken, if they did not do so. V'sha'avu b'kli sholem, and they collected the water in a keli which is sholem, complete, intact. And it happened, what you didn't want to happen, that three Lugim fell back in, and the Mikveh therefore became possible as a result. But now you want to clean it up again and make it kosher. If it's possible, if it's possible to seal off the hole where the waters are coming in from the spring, the Kalut, easily. Toif lahachmer. Do that. Seal it off. The last skin. Avalim yesh torah godor. If it's too difficult to do so, but over or the evet shall also be. The evet they didn't do so. Yesh lismocha mekini. You can rely on the ones who are lenient. The soivim the end sheiva poselas b'mayim. That sheiva does not pass over mayim. Kichein ikur, because really that's the din that we hold. Just what we're laughing with. Afilu b'mikvah sheein b'mayim. And even in a mikvah where there's no spring, a regular mikvah, im ein a kli godol kol kach. If, the, if it's a small keli that you're using to get out the water, shebevadai, it's not so big that for sure yiprushom gimul lugim shoavim. That for sure it's going to be three lugim that fell back in. And she yesh lachush. We're only concerned shem and naflu bezechaseh. They fell in one after another, like we learned before. As in this kind of situations, we can be lenient. The sfeikah, the gimul lugim shoavim. Whenever you have a suffix of gimul lugim shoavim, it's a suffix the rabbana. So in that kind of a situation, we're not going to be concerned with the event. What is that? We should be able to use that that, that cool. Yeah. Anytime. If there is. No. Whether, when, whether, whether or not, not the body is clean or not. Yeah. And you're saying, well, maybe it fell out and maybe it was not three looking and maybe it was three looking but it's only one look three times. Exactly, yeah. We should be able to say that even with a bucket that's sealed on the bottom, that has no hole. Why can't we make the same one then? Yeah. Yeah, in those kind of situations, that's what he's saying. We know also came, the shovel be clear shalom. They didn't do all you saying like Hatchila? No, because that's what that's what the, the Ramos says. If they did it be clear shalom, right? And we're, again, we're talking about a Mayan. Right. Because that's a suffix. Otherwise, I mean, you, you don't use Kalim without a hole where it's a regular mikveh. Because of this problem, in lechatchila you don't want to do it. But here you have the additional leniency that it's a mayon, it's a spring, and therefore he he suggests that lechatchila, if you want to, if three lugim fell in there, when if solamim veroitzen now you want to clean it lechatchila, try to to lifkoik the hole. What, what are you going to accomplish? So the Shach says, the Taz also says pretty much the same thing. To clean the In such a way where you don't have the original three Mayim uh, that were, were Nifzolim, you should do so. He brings down an interesting Bach that it's Mutor Lifkoik Nikve Nevi Afilu with Matlones and Mekabal Tumor that you can seal it off even with a material that is Mechabal Tuma, even though someone, there are some shittas that hold you shouldn't do that, here it's different. Shani hocha de shastimo eno elo lenageva it's only for cleaning the mikveh. So it could be used. Yeah, the Taz also explains bringing down the Chuba Sarosh, the Yoko Livko Kafilu Bidovra Mechabal Tuma, the Dafka Bos Mayim Le Mikveh. It's only bringing water to the mikveh that boinu li the dovah sheinu mekabel tumah. It has to be something that's not mekabel tumah. Aval minias amayim that shelo yitzu prevent the water from not leaving the mikveh. Lo ich paslon we say we don't care from what material is done. 
Okay, that we'll see later on in Sif Nun. So that would be the difference between a Mayan and a regular mikveh, where you have the additional leniency that there are some shittas that hold that Mayim Shuvim would not be a problem here. So taking it out with small kalim that do not have a hole and they're very small would not be a problem. Again, we're taking out the water now. We're not putting it back in. But you are concerned that they may fall back in. Yeah, but if they're small, you don't need to be so concerned. So that's why the, the Ramos says, but in the event they did fall back in, and they pass up, try to clean it out, if, poss- if at all possible. Otherwise, you can be lenient on those that hold the ancient to Poseidon's Bemayim. Sif, Mem Aleph, Mem Beis, Mem Gimel are taken from a Mishnah. And I don't think that, or from the Rambam too, there, I don't think that this will happen too often, but it's good to know. In, in, in case, just in case, water is collected in kalim that were inadvertently left outside. Because what did we say before? We said that the criteria to make a, the water's puzzle is that one intentionally does it. There were two conditions. Condition number one in Sifla Medalla, that is. Was that a kli for it to, to be considered a kli to live to Lamayim Shiva Mishum Shiva? It has to be that it's royal kabel koidushi kvayeno. It has to be that it was called a keli before you actually connected to the mikveh. And she's smaller than das. Remember, it has to be filled with the knowledge. In other words, it has to be intent. And then it passes. So here, the Chavi goes through the various scenarios of one who forgot, left it there, or intentionally put it out there, but why did he put it? What was the purpose of putting the kelim on the, on the, in the backyard? What was the purpose of leaving them on the roof? Why, was it, why did he leave it underneath this pipe? So, there are various sheets over here on what constitutes something that is inadvertent or without das, in where we are goiser, in other words, where we are machmir, that even though he may have left it in such a way that it's okay, we still don't allow it. But I'm not going to go through all the shit, it's just pretty much going to what the Mechaber says, and maybe we'll see also the Shach brings down the Ramban. So what the first scenario is the one who leaves Kalim containers underneath the Tzinor, the actual pipe through which the rainwater comes down. Why does he do that? Lekabel mimav. And he puts it underneath the tzinor in order to collect the water she plume him that from there they should fall into the mikveh. So he's not picking up the container. He's just facilitating the, the process of getting the water into the mikveh. So he put kelim tachat tzinor and the kabel mimav to collect the waters. Im hinicham if he left those kelim at the time when it was clouded and before the clouds scattered in other words he left them during the time it was clouded before the clouds scattered the rain came down and filled those buckets so even though all he was doing is allowing the waters to go directly from the Tzino to the Mikveh, these are regular kelim, remember. And putting them underneath during a time where, the, where it's, it's cloudy, before the clouds scattered, it rained and they filled up. So far, what we see from this is that this is considered Ladath, and they're considered Shuvim. Avalim lo avim, but if, the, if there was no, it was not clouded when he left them there. Achakach nitkashu, then they became cloudy and they filled up. Or even if he left it when it was clouded, when it pazu, and then they scattered. Venisharu sham, and they still remained there. At shechazu venitkashu until later on again it became cloud. Veyoduk sham, and the rain came down and it fell and they filled up. Lo chashivu, that's not called the das. Veinam poislim, 
and they're not going to pass on us. We said before, you need das to pass on. Bilvad, but this is very important. It's still a keli. So, what is, it's not enough that it's just a no das. Bilvad, sheyish boris a keli. Either you break the keli and let the water fall into the mikveh, or you have cheno, or you turn it up, turn it up, turn it upside down. In a, such a way, that you don't raise it from the ground. If you just raise it from the ground, they will be called children. So you have buckets for some reason. This is the way that you have to deal with it if, you, if those waters are to be used in the mikveh. You know, in some places, water is, is very scarce. So you don't want to make a mistake. Because if you have to wait for the next rain, you may have to wait two years, <laughs> whatever. So that's the thing over here. You know, you're trying to do something, but you better know what you're doing. So even though it wasn't like that, still, you would have to somehow make a hole, break it, or make it fall in such a way that you don't pick it up. Once you picked it up, it's my shogun. What about maniach mambeza maniach kankanim broshagag? You put it on the roof. Now here, you had an intent. What was the intent? Your intent is you want to dry them up. Oh, so that means you have not only no intent to collect water in them, you actually have the opposite intent. You have the intent of letting them dry. Lenagvo. The Yordu Alem Shom and the rain fell into them. Benit Malo they filled up. Afal Pisho, even though it's a rainy season. You still have to break the kankanim. Or 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 uh, tilt them. The maim show you the kankanim and the water that is the kankanim shade him, lit ball by him, you can use them to immerse in them. The apple fish call a maim ailo you can even if all this water was in the kalim. Why is this okay? Sharelo milom yodo, you did not do it directly with your hands. But obviously, if you pick them up, picked up the pitchers, and you pour them, then all the water in them is shuvim. So this halacha is a little bit more lenient than the other one, Tachas Atziner, because it says, Here, because in, as some explain it, here the intent is the opposite. You don't really want the water, you want them to dry. So here you're saying, it's not I'm just leaving them there. I'm actually leaving them to dry. So this, therefore, doesn't make a difference, the fact that it's a rainy season, but you still have to tilt it or break it in order for the waters to get to the mikveh in the proper manner. Raising them would still be a maim shuvim. Sif mem gimel. Hasayad. Let's say the guy who came to plaster the mikveh, he's the Sayyid. He forgot his big um, container, I guess we can call it that, seats, his big container in the mikveh. And that big container filled up with water. Even though there's very little water left in the mikveh, and most of the water of the mikveh is contained within this container. It's okay. Just just break the atzitz bimkoima in its spot. The mikveh is all kosher because this guy is not going to leave his lime and material in the mikveh. It was a mistake. He forgot, left it there somehow. That is why it's okay. It's sufficient. That's not call me das. He doesn't want to leave it there. But it just happened that he left it there. But still, you would have to break it to allow for the waters to flow directly into the mikveh. In that time, it would be kosher. Then you have another scenario. Let's see somebody actually put pictures inside the mikveh somehow, all around. And his intent was kedele chasman. He wanted these pictures to be sealed. You know what? You know what it means to seal a picture. 
let's say you use it for wine. You don't want the wine to be absorbed into the walls of the pitcher. You want this, these pitchers to be so full with liquid that they are per, pretty much no longer perforous. And that was his intent when he put the pitchers in the mikvah, to somehow get them saturated, that would be the right word, with water, to completely seal them. And here they filled up with water, even though the mikvah, the rest of the mikvah, the ground absorbed whatever water was there, and all you have is shamayim, all you have is a little bit of water, the water that is in the kankanim. Guess what? It's okay. Go ahead, you can break the kankanim. The waters that will pretty much uh, settle and form the mikveh will be kosher. So you had to, of course, have broken the kankanim. But here, we don't have the problem that you left them there. But, I, but he left them there. I would think that that is Midas. That's not called Midas because why? He left them there, Lechasman. He left them there to seal them. In other words, with a completely different idea in mind. So here it's interesting. Here he says, Apal Pisha Bola Mikve Esmeimo, Belon Nisha Shamaim Klal. No water is left. That's all you have left. This is a little bit different than the Sayyid. In the Sayyid, we said some waters were left. What's the difference? The Ta says like this. First of all, he had no Kavano Shikan so Maim the Toichan. He just wants the waters to seal them, but not that the waters should collect there. Over there, there's more of an intent. Because he actually went there and put it there because he was working there. So, so therefore, you, you, the Mechaber required over there, besides the water that is in that seats. But in the case of Lechasmon, that is not that, he, not that he wants the waters to collect in them at all. He basically wants to put wine, and he just wants these pitchers to be sealed. I think we should pretty much stop here. The only thing I, I want to point out is that I did see a very interesting discussion about how you could know if the waters that you that are coming into the mikvah from a spring are in fact coming from a spring and not from a river. Because if they're coming from a river, it's not a Mayan. And you wouldn't have all the advantages of a Mayan. There's several ways. I mean, it, this would require investigation, especially in places where, like you live, was it South Carolina? Well, I live in Virginia. North Carolina? I live in Virginia. I'm sorry. Yeah, in Virginia. Yeah. Where the water table is very, or, or no, not low. It's high. It's high, yeah. And that water is coming from the ocean. Or is it coming from uh, uh, a river, or if it's coming from a spring? It's difficult to know. Usually, if it does come from a spring, you would be able to tell in the following way. If it's coming out of a rock, many, many times it's basically coming from a spring. If it's just that the water table is high, it could be that it's coming from uh, a body of water close by. So anytime you have rivers in the area, you have a large body of water in the, in the, in the neighborhood, you would have to consider this. this. You, you would have to analyze the situation and not, the, and not just figure that this is coming from a spring. Because that may be very likely coming from a river or from the ocean, not from a spring. A spring can also be, you can also see a spring when the water is bubbling and it's coming from the bottom up. That's another way to tell. Water is coming from exactly the same spot at a steady flow. Not that's coming through a drip or through a tremendous flow or, or that it's not exactly the same amount at all times 
that would maybe indicate that this is coming from some sort of river in the neighborhood, but not through a Mayan. So to know this is important because there are certain leniencies that apply to a mind that do not exist in a mikveh. I mean, especially the whole concept of zoichalin. Zoichalin means that the, that the waters can be metar as they're running, streaming. That does not apply to me. In a mikveh, you cannot have that. They have to be standing water. So this will be an important detail to resolve in case one wants to use this water, one wants to rely on this water, he would have to make that determination, where is this water really coming from? Is it going to be a mikveh or is it going to really be a mayan? So that sometimes could be a good question. It would need further investigation. If you build land out, right. Florida, Virginia, other places, where they built underwater's edge on basically swampy land. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have a high water table. Right. That water was probably from an ocean or a bay or something like that. Right. Which would have been kosher water to start. With. Well, the waters would be kosher somehow if you can get them into the, the mikveh in, in the right way. Right. And then of course it comes right. from there. But it would be a mikveh, not a mayan. Right. Right. So mine is very specific when you have made the determination that this is really a spring. There's no large bodies of water in the neighborhood, there's no rivers where this may be percolating from. Because if it is, then it would be a mikveh, but it would not have the leniencies of a Mayan. Okay.